Welcome everyone. Uh, let's start. Uh, we might need uh, some more time, so we may try to visit as much as possible. Uh, this is generally very good for the workshops and the long sessions. We just got the 30 minutes, so I'll try to squeeze it away. Uh, so giving, a, giving you the brief, uh, so this will be the outline for this session. So I'll go through with the environment which I'm using for the demonstration. Then we'll again go back to the, uh, the concepts of TDD and BDD. Uh, I'm sure this is not new to all of you. Uh, this has already been practiced on the server side uh, most often. Uh, then we'll take one domain problem that would be from the uh, real world. Uh, would be the actual problem which we want, which we'll start coding. Uh, then we'll try to come up with the high level stories. Uh, and we'll start one story by story in the demonstration. Uh, and then there will be some slot for questions. Uh, now, so the main goal is not to achieve the domain problem which we are considering. The main goal is to understand how we can write clean and testable code in JavaScript uh, using the TDD and PDD concepts. Uh, so let's. I'll come back to the development environment once we go through these uh, couple of slides quickly. Uh, so the concepts, all those, it's a uh, red, green, refactory uh, philosophy that mostly uses for TDD. So whenever you start new feature or improvements, you write a test first. Uh, make sure it's failing. That, that's where we know, okay, it's failing for the right reason. Correct it, write the production code or the test and refactor. We read the code and see if there are any improvements. Uh, the aspects that this uh, practice has, uh, it will always force your design to keep it simple. Uh, and you avoid any wastage that you will be coding up front. And that's the IP principle. Uh, and it's very important when, whenever you do unit testing, uh, there might not be surrounding. <coughs> Modules present, so you need to pick it that time. The benefits design becomes more clearer, clearer. You always get the testable code, and the focus is only on what important. So this will keep you focused on what you need to implement, and not it will not distract with the other features, whatever coming down the line. Uh, let's jump to the BDD. Uh, why do we need BDD if there's already a BDD practice uh, established? Well, uh, it's just the extension, uh, but inside the unit was more dev-centric, uh, where the BDD is more driven by the business or business value. So it said, okay, uh, the problem with unit testing was from where to start, what's the starting point? And BDD answers that. So it said, okay, let's take one behavior, one feature at a time, code that first. And once that feature is coded, then you that will drive your units. Uh, some of the aspects, uh, while giving the name for the particular test, it will make the sentence, and that sentence should be making sense to the stakeholder business guy. So we are thinking from the customer user perspective. Uh, benefits again, uh, it will be clear understanding about the software behavior. So. That will answer your question like, why should I create that particular code? So that's the behavior we want to support and that's the need of that particular code. It will help you to give the starting points and it encourages more collaboration between the stakeholders, BAs, QAs, testers, all. So all are on the same page. Uh, let's, so for this uh, further exercise, we'll be using domain problem, which is HitMap, uh, which is commonly used in the financial sectors. Uh, but it's it just the concept of representing the data, so it's not limited to the financial. It can be used anywhere. Uh, to quickly give to give you the demonstration or the explain the concept of HitMap. Uh, okay, if I show this representation taken from the one of the real websites, can you guess what are who are the top four gainers from this representation? Uh, well, okay, uh, so it's not important who are the four gainers, uh, the process that you did. So actually you count each uh, functional asset wise, 
instrument wise and you compare who is has the highest percent change the thing is uh, whenever we want to represent some of the things very exciting way if we make use of some visual aspect it will for much better so let's try to solve same question from this we presentation where the green says it's a positive red is negative and there are shades so more the darker the shade the more the change is so if i ask you the same question okay what are the four gainers from this representation you probably able to answer in a maybe a taking half time so that that's the heat map so it it is a pictorial representation of data and the change or the value we want to depict is depicted in the shade of the color and that's what we want to achieve in this exercise uh so they whenever and this is a real time application or real time com, uh, example where the data will push from the server so whenever in the exchange there is a change in the price for the particular instrument that would be pushed to the client and the heat map would be updated in real time uh there are some animations to show the uh, particular instruments price change so it's a bouncing effect uh let's see if we able to crack all the three stories we'll able to see the the bouncing effect as well and uh, this is the another version of heat map uh, which is taken from the my real project uh so let's quickly identify stories which will help the our exercise uh any cases what could be the stories if we understood the requirements clearly uh the third rule for the stories it has to be marketable when i say it has to be marketable means once a uh, developer done with the story once development it has to be a uh, showcaseable showcaseable it means it should have some value that customer can see in that so it has to be always a customer focused so it has to be marketable okay uh, let's uh, i have broke down the uh, requirement in the stories so first story is uh, as a trader uh, and this is we are developing for let's say retail where retail users like us where we will go visit the site and see the heat map so as a trader when i load the heat map application then i want to see the instruments so that i'll see i'll get the picture of the market i'll see the all the instruments together the benefit okay so yeah that's a nice way to start just getting the all the instrument details snapshot and showing on the screen uh second story is as a trader i want to see price change updating in real time so on that next story will add the will start to listen update messages from the server and we update the heat map uh, the change on the heat map and the third story is as a trader i should be able to see instrument <coughs> performance visually so whatever change we are getting will convert that into the color code and will apply that color code to the instrument type and that's the third story and the benefit is so that the trader will get better overview of the market uh, very quickly okay so this is the story one in more detail uh, so the scenario is when a trader starts the application you will see the instrument with detail instrument symbol name and price percentage so now let's jump to the eclipse Okay. I'll increase the font. Um, afraid I may not able to increase the font for the. script explorer uh square with me for that that 
Okay. So let's go back to the slide which was the environment which we skipped. Uh, so I'm using the Eclipse ID for JavaScript web developers. Uh, I have pre-installed the JT plugin. Uh, it's available in marketplace. It's run JT run plugin. Uh, for this exercise, the focus is on uh, front-end development. So we'll be not focusing more on backend side. So that I got the ready backend stuff, which is called Streamer .jar, uh, which I have started on 8081. Uh, the backend is the implementation of web socket. Uh, so, so that uh, I'll receive the push or update methods from the server. Okay, uh, let's go back to the Eclipse. Now, for convenience, I moved all the necessary folders in web app so that I can easily map my application context to web app. Uh, as you notice, the source folder is empty, and that's what we want to populate using the test. Uh, so I got the couple of infrastructure ready. Uh, inside the test, you will say acceptance integration unit. Uh, so acceptance test will contains the all the behavior related test, acceptance test. Now there are various approaches of acceptance test. The approach that I'll be using here is the that we skip the UI layer and the backend layer uh, purposefully and uh, I'm able to do that because uh, there are lots of exciting frameworks. One of them is Knockout. So Knockout say if you populate your model properly, don't worry about UI, it will be reflected accordingly. So, and, but we can't rely on wiring, so that's why we need to write the integration test as well. And of course, unit test, which would be evolving the technical design mode uh, in more detail. Uh, Okay, so inside the acceptance test, I got sample test return. Uh, this is the very simple test return in just Jasmine. So describe the first line is the test suite, the name of the test suite. So it's a let's say Jasmine. Uh, each test starts with the each keyword with function, and the first parameter is the description or the name the sentence of your test. Uh, it doesn't sub you use the mechanism of uh, given when then block, but uh, for starting it's very helpful, but as you mature with or understands it more clearly, uh, you see that's uh, unnecessary. Uh, so this is some variable I have said, then this is the matcher or verification. Expect your code to be a lot simpler. How to run it? So I already got the infrastructure in my Eclipse. Uh, so inside libraries, you I got the Jasmine code. The easiest way to get Jasmine integrated in your workspace is clone the Jasmine project from GitHub and just paste the dependency JS here. It also gives you a runner. Uh, so I have just copy paste the runner as it is. It has created two sections. One in in the spec section will be adding the all the tests, and in the source code will be adding the production code files. Uh, to run it, it's very easy. Just open this into the web browser, and it, it would say one spec is ready. So that's the environment. That's the Jasmine infrastructure we got. I uh, will be using that. So let's, uh, without wasting too much time, let's jump to the first test. Uh, so under hitmap, hit map, I'm creating a new file. Let's say hitmap spec. Okay, uh, I'll copy the sample file, save some time. Uh, I have also got some some of the cheat code present so that uh, for the comp 
for the production code we might do some copy paste to save some time okay uh, so let's rename the test suite let's say heatmap specs uh, I don't know what would be here so the first story says display it displays instruments <coughs> on application load okay so that's my first scenario in a church. yeah so it displays all the instruments with basic details when application loads so when, whenever we say TDD or PDD it's not or when we follow the agile practices uh, it's not that we don't need design upfront we just say that we don't need design in detail upfront uh, it's very good idea to get the high level design with the with team uh, with the white whiteboard so let's see if we can come up with the high level design for first story okay uh, so this could be the very simple architecture for my first story one so we got the application here which will be talking to the streamer engine which is already exist we know the contracts which will supply some data we need to populate model somewhere in the application so that whenever I do a knockout binding with that model, my new app would be reflected accordingly. So that's I think fair enough. That's the good starting point. Uh, so from this description, I know the when, right? So when application loads, we want to do something. So we got the trigger part. So I said when application load, do something. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just making these sections. Uh, now, <coughs> are we getting any hint apart from this? Okay, any ideas? So we got one given, which is we need to construct the application. So okay, I have created the. That's fair enough. Now we need a response from server, right? So that would be the my verification. Now when when whenever you do a unit testing or behavior testing, it's very important to control the output to get to control the response. Now it's very tricky to get your all the tests running when the application or the backend is not returning the concrete or the predefined response. If it's changing continuously, it's very tough to pass the test. So what I need is I need some response that in real that streamer engine or the backend would be returning. Uh, so I got uh, some of the cheat codes with me that has the, the message already defined. Uh, Maybe at this stage we can okay say okay it's not clear with the first architecture okay it's just the application I don't know how the stuff will work okay it's nice idea to hit the whiteboard again and do a bit more detailed discussion there uh, so let's go into the more detail this is how there would be some uh, evolution to the earlier design so let's say okay. So we know the contacts with the streamer engine. We'll be sending slash inst instrument request to the streamer engine, and that would be returning us a snapshot message. So when I say snapshot, is the static data at that point. So whatever change at that point, 
and then there will be update message that's the update change data okay so it's written in your snapshot message so why do i need a channel uh, okay we need out some way where we can short circuit the integration layer so that whatever this response we want we we have more control over that so that's why channel and it's very nice idea because uh, that's give you flexibility to connect to the multiple backends based on the need uh, okay then we already got the application now we want to populate some model so it's written in me the all the instruments so it's kind of collections so i need some container and that's where we got the instrument container so whenever we get the instrument so we'll populate the instrument container and there would be some binding and that will take care of the ui okay so this is giving much better clarity now uh, so we'll say we need a message okay we need channel so when i start application <coughs> i need channel and i also need some instrument container model okay so i create those variables with click have any question at any time please shout uh, we might use some of the time from the question answer session uh, it's very tough for in 30 minutes to cover such type of uh, demonstration but uh, let's try okay uh, and i'll say okay channel for test because here we, we might not be using real because we want the stuff work. Okay, now we I think we got the given part sorted out. Now what would be my verification? Uh, generally, we do a verification first. So what I'm expecting here is I'm expecting my instrument container. which is holding collection of instruments should populate equal to the snapshot message I got so I'll say I just traverse down this object I'll get the so this message is written in array and I'll say zero element. So whatever coming from the bucket, my model should be equal to that particular object. And similarly for second instrument as well. Yeah. So this is how my first acceptance looks like. So once when application is loaded, whenever I have the instrument container and the channel defined, then I want my model to be populated with the the business with the instruments that's coming from the server. Okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, now, if I run this test it will complain about the okay we need to create those classes uh, now I'll quickly switch over to the another workspace where I'll show how this will trigger or how this will uh, focus to or how this could be a starting point to write the unit test now this will evolve this will ask us to uh, okay write the, define the application function class then write the load function now we will not be writing anything in load unless we write the test first uh, okay now 
I'm, I may not be able to code everything. Let me quickly switch back to the workspace where I have this uh, this domain is solved in story wise. I'll be quickly go over how it would have been evolved. <laughs> Maybe I can switch the box to the screen itself. So go through the story one. Uh, so let's see if we have this similar acceptance test which we just got here. Uh, let me increase the font size to larger. So, so display all the instruments on application load. Okay, we got that. Then when application loads, then we created the application which containing instrument container and web socket channel. So here we are using web socket channel for test, and these are the my sources. Now on this, I should be seeing this test uh, failing in the other workspace. Now this will evolve me to write the application class and so before writing load I would have written the unit test so the first unit of the particular load is the request instrument snapshot on load so whenever there is a load, then I'm expecting a send request over the WebSocket channel. And how you mock in Jasmine, this is how you mock, and it, it says file. So there are two ways. One is you create your object if the class is already defined, function is already defined. Uh, then spy on any method, any function that you are interested in within that object. And then they, you can verify assert in the verification section where particular interaction has been made or not. The other way is you can say jasmine dot create spy, and you can this is just the name to refer inside the failure statements. So this is how on the fly you can create a spy objects, and you can say okay, then you can create a function and you can spy that particular function as well. So I would have done load, then once the application is load, loaded, uh, then we want, now it's an RC. So once the, so the application loads job is just to make a request, snapshot request. Uh, it would be async, so we need some listener there. So it says it registers listener on the channel as well. So whenever there is a response, it will give the callback to the listener. Uh, and the another <coughs> responsibility of this application would be whenever there is an on snapshot callback, whenever message comes from the packet, then add each invoke this interaction. So ask instrument container to add those instruments. Anil, we have to move to a QA session right now. Yeah, two minutes. Yeah, sure. Okay, so this is how uh, the test looks like for the application, and then the the my code evolves. So the idea is uh, not to jump to the production code immediately. 
whatever your requirement is from the from the technical perspective or the business perspective put the put that into the code first and then write production code the benefit is you will find very clean code maintainable and if you say okay i'll write production code i'll write unit test later on but believe me it's very tough to write unit test after that because then no collaboration objects are separated properly uh, doing the state based testing is painful because your test grows lots of lots of lines and by doing this once it gives you it's empowers the design so it's very flexible based on the requirement we can increase we can put the strength in, in the design uh so let's see uh running the test now it will run all the test for this particular story and jasmine got all the supports so you can easily integrate in eclipse you don't need to switch between two windows it's one id uh and also it got the uh, maven plugin so that you can put into the your build as well cool uh, i'm sorry uh, we can't see the application running on the browser uh, it was optimistic to cover all the stories because it takes uh, quite a lot time uh, i generally prefer this kind of in a workshop uh, okay so let's quickly go over the remaining ppt is if those make any sense so story 2 would have evolved for the design then story 3 would have added the another entities their collaboration and this would have been driven all by test unit tests uh so questions i need to wrap up sorry yeah. so when you spy on it just intercepts then those method calls right yeah only those functions so it's not a mocking library it just it actually intercepts run by messages yeah and the, there are five uh, five more uh, Mature in that sense because we, suppose we want to spy on particular function, but we also want actual exec execution. So you can spy on say okay spy on particular method and follow through. So it will execute the actual code as well. Where in the below we can verify whether the particular interaction has been made, and if there is something test requires to be apart from the actual execution, we can achieve that as well. It's very unlikely, but it has that support. What uh, do you? Please go ahead. Uh, what is the clean way to tear down? Uh, it has the before each and after each method. Jasmine, Jasmine got the support like set up and tear down. So we can see the be before each here. Uh, similarly, there is a tear down uh, after each block, which is executed after each test. And it got some. Uh, Jasmine got some. Function as well to clear reset the spy on objects so that it clears everything for the next test to be ready. Here your server. Here your server side application is what Java or how how the server side written it? It's a Java where okay. it is embedded. Okay. So now uh, uh, here Jasmine will be able to help you test. most of your client side javascript yes. except for the last leg of your javascript which actually makes the communication calls because this it would be hard to test that is that correct yeah, or will it be able to test against the actual http requests that go over the wire so two things we can do the actual testing so we can actually put the real channel so if we go back to the this slide So this could be actual channel, and my Jasmine is actually injecting the actual channel. That's very well possible in scenario where we know what that engine is returning. If that is returning finite set of instruments predefined, that's fine. We can adopt that approach. But if it's a real engine and we don't know which instruments it will return, those might be a flexible uh, in the sense like change or some of the data may not be same each each time. Then I. Prefer it's a good idea to mock either at the client side because it's more faster to run and easy to maintain than the mocking at the backend side. But yeah, both are available approaches. Any more questions? Uh, 
to write the test cases for asynchronous request. I mean, what I'm facing most of the time, whether I use the Jasmine or Q unit, the second block executes before first. So in that time, in that case, how can we? Uh, okay, Jasmine got some uh, say, support. Uh, I haven't tried that much. Uh, not sure if that will help you. Uh, but yeah. Uh, in whatever applications I have worked, uh, whenever there is a sync, we separate our out into the two things, two blocks. Uh, and we, it was the unit test which was just doing the first part. So when you make a request, though it's a sync. We have to use either callback. Yeah, so callback. So, yeah, so, so you test the callback separate out, and then you just test the mechanism of whether you are properly wiring your callback or not. So that's the one way which we have used. And apart from web sockets, uh, which other protocols you can spy on? So we can spy on any any function, any function we can JavaScript. There is no. No, I mean if I want to create a channel to simulate a REST API behavior. Okay. And uh, now I want to you know use that channel. Mm -hmm. So Jasmine will be able to support. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean it's uh, independent of any technology, the okay. Jasmine thing. So this is just a channel for to see the actual application running. That's was the reason using the WebSocket. But you can use any technology. So you can use Node.js, whatever. It doesn't matter for just me. It's just the one integration there. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, so you guys. Much.